irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to the Sheena Metal Experience with your host, Sheena Metal, right here on LA Talk Radio. That's right. It's the Sheena Metal Experience right here on L.A. Talk Radio. For more info on the show, latalkradio.com, sheenametalexperience.com. Don't forget to email me and let me know what you think of the show. If you're looking for me online, it's so easy. I'm just at Sheena Metal everywhere on social media. I'm also the founder of a movement of peace, love, kindness, and unity. We're at IamRaisingTheVibration.com and at our nonprofit hub, which is new, which is Raising the Vibration. Dot org. Um, also, sometimes here on the show, I do special broadcasts. We're doing one today called Light Workers Unite. I sit down with another uh, light worker today, my good friend Rebecca Haywood, who's a shaman. Uh, she's not here yet. I'm pointing to her like she's here. Uh, my guest today is Empty Chair. She'll be here in just seconds. Um, all different kinds of light workers, uh, as I am one. And we do free psychic readings, healings, and. Uh, spiritual counseling and anything that makes you happy that you need. How you get on the air with us for one of these sessions for free is you text me on this right here, 818-437-0886. Yes, I just gave my private cell out to everyone in the universe because that's how much I want to help and heal the world. 818-437-0886. Send me a text with your name and your number and uh, your email and I will get you on the air for a reading put you on the list and we'll get you on sometimes there's a long list we can't get everybody on ever but we get a lot of people on every day and i love that story we're going to start as soon as rick gets here and get somebody start rolling in through the clients today because it's very exciting to have you all here and to take your calls and to feel your energy and to hear about your lives these are all things that i just totally dig if you're looking for my spiritual practice online it's at I am raising your vibration.com. See how I did that? Or at Sheena Metal Spiritual.com. We also have a great online community for my nonprofit Peace, Love, Kindness, Unity movement at the vibration nation.com and a blog and vlog site at a vibration nation.com. Coming soon, something Rebecca's helping me with. Our next outreach is going to be called Women Raising the Vibration.com. And it's our, uh, our women's hub for women to learn to support each other. So that we can then go on and and support uh, everyone. And if we want the equality we so seek from men, it starts with us. We need to start supporting each other. Women need to be better to women. I said it out loud. It's not always a popular opinion, but it's mine. I know it's Rebecca's as well. Rebecca and I are going to be working on um, a lecture series coming up. First workshop probably in a couple of months. And I'm very excited about that. And it's uh, it's kind of women centric. So um, every year, as you know, for charity, I direct a production of the Vagina Monologues with about 100 actresses of Eve Ensler's wonderful play for charity. And so I work with a lot of women. And I do a lot of women's stuff. I've done women comedy nights, women's music nights. And I'm going to start pulling all that stuff together again and folding it other. Un- I'm folding it underneath this uh, Women's Raising the Vibration uh, outreach of our movement, RaisingTheVibration.org. So that's an exciting thing. Also, uh, today on Haunted Playground, my good friend Patty Negri, you know her from Ghost Adventures and so many things. She and I have a web series called Living with the Dead about the good spirits in our life that guide us and help us through everything that we do. And that's at uh, wearelivingwiththedead.com. And we do live shows called Antiques Go Show. That's at antiquesgoshow.com. And our next one is going to be in May. As soon as we firm up the date, we will announce it. We thought it was going to be May 3rd. And then Patty got a Paracon. So now we think it's May 10th, but we're waiting to hear back from the theater. They're always at the Loft Ensemble Theater. Uh, It's a wonderful place. 
And I'm so honored to have them as my friends and to have them be a part of everything that I'm doing. Um, it's a wonderful theater company with fantastic members and they do such quality plays. And that's where we do the Antiques Go Show. We just did one to a sold out crowd last Friday night and it was so fun. We read a bunch of people brought their haunted items. It's like Antiques Roadshow with ghosts. And of course, uh, our web series stars Belle, the 103 year old possessed doll. So she's at every show and she's just so damn cute and so scary. Uh, also, uh, my movement of peace, love, kindness, and unity. Um, we do gatherings uh, once a month at the Loft Ensemble Theater in Sherman Oaks, and we have one this Sunday. That's St. Patrick's Day, 11 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Doors at 11. Show starts at 11.30 till 2.30. Um, it's, there's no admission. If you want to make a donation, great. You don't have to. Uh, uh, text me or email me, Sheena at IamRaisingTheVibration.com, and let me know that you're interested in being a part of Sunday and I will reserve seats for you. Bring some friends, spread the word. Uh, my special guest is Dee Wallace and the wonderful Patty Nagri will be doing a little invocation to start the night out. So how awesome is that? Okay. While we wait on Rebecca, one more time, if you want to get on the air, 818-437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. That's how you get on the air with me and, um, and Rebecca. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a call. And I've never, I've never started with a call without someone else here, but I'm a big girl and I bet I can do this. So I'm going to call, uh, uh, we're going to see if we can get Carol on the line and, uh, and then I will talk a little bit to Carol and when Rebecca sneaks in, she can sneak in and then she can help out because we all help each other here on, uh, the Sheena Metal Experience and especially on Lightworkers Unite. Um, of course I do this show, these broadcasts usually on my daily show here every Tuesday and Thursday, although sometimes those dates change. This week it's going to be Tuesday and Wednesday. I have something else on Thursday uh, here on the Sheena Metal Experience. Uh, my wonderful friend Linda Pearl is stopping in. Um, so it's always, it's always, usually always Tuesday, Thursdays, and then every Tuesday on my Haunted Playground show, which is 12 noon to 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. So let's get Carol on the on the line here, and then we are rocking and rolling with our first caller of the day, which is very, very, very exciting. He, and here we go. Remember, if you want to text me and get on the air, 818-437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. In just seconds. Carol. Here we go. Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? I am good. How are you? Good. It's great to have you here. Great to hear your voice. Oh, I know. Yours, too. <laughs> Thank you. I'm turning you up a little bit because I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Let me boost, boost you up a little bit, sweetheart. There we go. Talk for me. Okay. Now. Oh, now you're way up. Good. Okay. Talk for me now. Oh. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. I good have job. speaker on. Oh, good. Um, yes? Hi. Hello. How How may I help you, my friend? Hi. <laughs> What's on your mind? Well, I just um, wonder if I'm on the right path. Okay. And I've moved again and okay. from where I need to be. Yeah. You don't feel like you belong where you, know. you are. Um, well, we came back to where we started from. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. It's but. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we were supposed to move back. It's not making you happy? Not at the moment, no. Okay. I feel like you feel very stuck right now. Like you just feel like you're not sure where to go and what to do next. And you just feel mm -hmm. like you, you feel sort of like you've gone backwards on your path and not forwards. Exactly. And... um you really, really, really could use some fresh energy of some kind in your life. Whether it's um, something exciting and new and fun that you like to do or something, you know, spiritual that lightens your load or whatever it is, you seem like you're desperately in need of something fun to do, my friend. Does that make sense? You're exactly right. I feel like you I just like the days just move by super slowly. Because you're just you just Thank don't have you. enough stimulating stuff in your life to make you feel really excited and to feel really um really engaged. Does that make sense? Oh yes. 
And the and this, I am. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, usually um, in my past, I've gotten oh, or I've done something stupid or something, and then I'll just move on, you know, move uh-huh. away. Uh-huh. But this last place I was at, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I didn't want to leave. I, you know, it wasn't running. It was just, I don't know. Right. And it's, and it's isolating where you are now. Are you in a smaller place now? Yeah. yeah. Um, smaller home? No, smaller area. Or a smaller town. Yeah, smaller yeah. town. Yeah. You feel isolated and yeah. al- almost um, like the isolation is making you feel a little claustrophobic. Hmm. Yeah. Hi, I'm, Rebecca. I'd like to find something to do. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like you to find something to do too. Say hi to Rebecca. Rebecca's with us now. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Rebecca. Yeah, I just feel so. Carol's moved back to a place where she came from, and she's not happy about the move, and she just feels lonely and isolated and mm-hmm. like bored. I mean, I hate to say bored because boards make bored makes it sound like it's something <laughs> that you can fix. But sometimes you're just in an area, honey, and there's just not enough stimulus for you. And if you're not excited about what's going on and you don't have much to do because you don't know anybody in a new area, I'm sorry, but you get bored and bored is not a good thing to be. Not for me. You know, so what excites you, sweetie? If you could spend, if you could every day get to do something, even for a short amount of time, what would you pick? What, what would really sort of set your soul on fire right now? I have no idea. Really? Because I've started so many things. Crafting, you know, I don't work anymore. So I just, I started to do that, but then I get bored with that. Okay. And then, oh, I'm going to do something <laughs> something else. It's ADD, I guess. Right. Or, or you're, looking but, for, you're looking for happiness outside of you mm-hmm. instead of inside of you. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're looking for something to complete you. Mm-hmm. And it's hard because stimulus is great, but it doesn't fix the, kind of the hole that's in you. And you have, to, you, have to, you have to get right with yourself first. And then crafting is much less boring. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think that boredom and that restlessness, le- restlessness comes from within you. That you're not sure what it is that you want to do because you're not sure who it is that you want to be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, my feeling is that this, yeah. this move, this return home is more than just a return to a place. It's a return to a place inside of you that uh, you had forgotten. And so it's going to take a little bit of time, hun, but be patient with it. Mm-hmm. Be patient with it. And this is about your reunion with you, not yeah. just your reunion with this land and this place and the people in it. Yeah. This is between you and you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. this is this is you and you for sure. Although I don't know that this is a place where you belong and where you're going to wind up. But I do know that, that this restlessness is going to get fixed within you, sweetheart. And then it's going to make a difference in everything. And, it's, and then you'll know where you belong. But I certainly wouldn't suggest moving now because you've done enough moves trying to sort of run away from you. Now it's time to figure out who you are before the, the next move to your forever place happens. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know? And, and yeah, meanwhile, I, I, would lo- I would love it if you would find a way to take a half hour every day and just spend some time with you in, in, a, in doing something that you like. Even if it's something that you think next week you might get bored at. Okay, great. But we get bored with. Okay, fine. So do something and then you get bored, you do something else next week. But you can't not do things because you're worried you're going to get bored. Because the not doing anything is is really tearing you apart inside. I agree. Does that make sense? Yes. So I have friends here that we I I'm the one that gets us together and we go to lunch and everything. Good. But I just find myself sitting there and they're talking. I mean, it's not like I don't talk. I'm a big talker. Yeah. But I don't know. Even if you don't talk, it's okay. I Yeah. It's okay not to talk. It just it's just important that you go. 
Well, and it really comes back to there's a piece of you that isn't quite here. Yeah. Does that feel true to you? Like that that here. You're not, that you're not here. You're, there's a there's a piece of you that isn't quite present. Yeah. Mm hmm And I'm not sure what happened for that piece of you to kind of go. Uh, <laughs> and it doesn't really matter. What matters wow. is that you're aware of it now. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that you call that that piece of you back to you. Okay. Yeah. Because when there's a piece of ourselves missing, and I know it sounds strange, <laughs> right? It sounds strange to talk about ourselves in that way, but you know, just um, the the key is to just renew that relationship with yourself. Yeah. And really, just with that awareness and that intention of like, yeah, a piece of me did leave the building, so to speak. Yeah. And I call her home. I call her back. You know, I'm 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 willing to reunite with mm -hmm. that part of ourselves, and sometimes it's a part well, of ourselves leaves. That would be my daughter. Your daughter, okay, okay. Well, there you have it. Yeah. So, would you like Been to share 15 anything? Fifteen years in March. Mm. Okay. I mean May. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes it's on Mother's Day. Mm. Mm. She was six. Oh. Yeah, that's it, sweetheart. That, I mean, that's, yeah. that's it, honey. You've, you've covered up for, you know, you've, you've covered up that hurt with at boredom and apathy. I mean, it's it, with not feeling anything. And then you wonder why you're not feeling anything, but you're not feeling anything because you think the alternative is to hurt all the time. Mm -hmm. When the truth is, when you, when you work through that and when you find a place where you can, can realize that that hurt is there, but put it in a place where it's been work through and placed properly so that it can slowly but surely begin to dissipate as grief does, um, then you'll actually start to heal. It's like you're preventing yourself from healing because you're scared to heal. And I get it. I totally get it. And scared to feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, don't be afraid to feel what you feel. You know, so many people shy from actually experiencing their grief uh, or they get stuck in the grief. Yeah. yeah. And really, you know, to me, grief is one of the ways that I connect to that person that has gone from me. When I remember that person, whether it's through my tears of sorrow or my tears of joy, I am reconnecting with them, mm -hmm. you know, and suddenly their energy is there with me. Yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> I don't recommend lingering in the sorrow because that's not really the way to honor your daughter's life, right? Mm -hmm. Her life was full of joy. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that is truly the best way to honor her life and truly the way to remember her is through that joy. So <clears throat> don't be afraid to feel that m those moments of grief because they will open that window to all those memories of joy and suddenly you will feel her right here with you. You know, and that Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's totally okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, so think about that. Think yeah. about instead of yeah. guarding yourself against the pain, just moving through it a little bit and letting it just sort of move through you. Yeah. Even though it's been 15 years, it's just like. Yeah. It's still fresh I mean, to you. Am I supposed to have fun? <laughs> yes. You're yeah. allowed to have fun. But you're allowed to go on with your life. That's what she wants. You're, you're allowed to have, you're allowed to be happy. I asked myself all that time. Yesterday was my mom's three year anniversary of her death and I ask myself oh. that all the time because I always talk <laughs> about how it's the best time in my life and then I immediately feel guilty and I think wait a minute is it allowed am I allowed to, for it to be the best time in my life because mom is gone aren't I supposed to be miserable mm -hmm. and and I miss her all the time and my life will never be the same since she left I'll, I'll never have I'll never have the same amount of levity inside of me as when she was here because she just <laughs> inspired that in me but but this is the most grounded most together most most amazing time I've ever had. And in some ways it's that way because she left. When she left, she gave me this amazing gift of fearlessness and strength and knowing that I survived her passing and I might not have those things had she not left. And even then that makes me feel guilty. But that's, that's totally normal. That, that's <laughs> how it's supposed to be. Grief is supposed to be confusing and beguiling. It's, it's not supposed to be easy. But it's okay to feel that way, to feel, gosh, should I be guilty? And then say, no, I, I shouldn't. Be. That's not what she would want. And I know it's not what my mom would want. She'd want me to live my life and have the best mm -hmm. life I could live until I come home and see her again. So that's what your little one wants too. Yeah, her life was cut short. Don't cut your life short. Exactly. In her name. Exactly. Mm -hmm. My mom used to always say to me my whole life, 
when I die, don't you die too, kid. And she would make me promise her that. So the night that she died, when I wanted to die, I heard her voice saying that, saying, there's no way. Don't you die too, kid. And every time I feel sad, I get myself involved in something that has to do with the living because that's what I promised her I would do. And that's what your daughter wants you to do too, sweetheart. You know? Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. You take she, care, love. Is she around me? She sure is. Just Especially now. Yeah. Yeah, she is, but you don't see her because you shut it out so much, honey. You're not letting her come in. Do you have a, a rocking okay. chair? Do you have a chair that rocks? Mm, yes. Yeah, that's where she stands. <laughs> I had to think. Yeah. yeah, that's where she is. Yeah. She's awesome. But she's free. She's yes, free of she pain. Is. She's free of worry. She she only knows love now where she is. And she just wants you to feel like that too, babe. You know? Okay. Okay. Thank you all. You bet, sweetheart. You take care of you. You're and uh, we're thinking about you and we love you. And we want you to be okay. And I'm here whenever you need me. That's what, that's what, because the gift of uh, Lightworkers Unite doesn't just stop when the phone connection gets disconnected. It's, um, you know, I, I believe in being here for you whenever you need me. So you just, you let me know, my friend. It's going to be okay. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hi. You, Rebecca. Oh, me. <laughs> I'm waiting for a caller to come on. I'm like, <laughs> look at me. Where this are we going really here? bizarre blank stare. <laughs> and I'm like, does she not worry to know where she is? Has she had a stroke? <laughs> What's happening? Because <laughs> I didn't get to say welcome to you because you came in in the middle of the call. So, well, so welcome <laughs> to the show. You know, you're on a show right now, right? Yeah, yeah, you know. I'm just, <laughs> you I just barely I'm touched I'm the ground. In the I'm like, does she <laughs> even know where she is right now? Does she know what's happening? Okay. <laughs> my you, head is. Are you having that kind of day? Go. No, actually, I've had a lovely day. Good. Yeah. How about these butterflies? Yeah, butterflies. You haven't seen the butterflies? Uh-uh. Where have you been? I don't know. I've been in Santa Monica Canyon. <laughs> there are no butterflies there. Well, we've got butterflies, but so there's there like, like a, a billion butterflies are migrating from Mexico to Oregon today. Oh. You haven't seen them everywhere. Uh huh. Oh my God! That whole I was waiting here to, to at the corner to come up to the studio, and this whole like. Thousands of them flew over the top of my car, all crazy from all directions, and they all flew together like in a big swarm. Yeah. And then they flew straight up the wall of the freeway overpass and up onto the 101. Oh, my goodness. And apparently they're practically stopping cars on the 405. I mean, they're everywhere. Wow. Big monarchs. It's the monarch migration. Wow. Right. So there's got to be some spiritual totems in that. Yeah. Well, of course. What Do you know what the spiritual totem for butterfly is? Not the spiritual totem for butterflies. A, but I don't, a spiritual I don't meaning of butterflies? I don't subscribe to that. But, um, you don't it, subscribe to like animal totems? I do, but just, you know, what do they mean to me? Oh, okay. You know, every once in a while I might look if I'm like, huh, that's an odd one. Like a raccoon. That was an odd one for me the other night. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what that one meant. That means clean your hands and bite everyone. <laughs> eat, eat trash. Yeah. No, Did I a wasn't. raccoon follow you? Um, I had the most exquisite moment with this raccoon. I was sitting on one of my little secret stairs um, in the evening. And okay. this little coon came up and just came right up to where I was sitting, right to the base of my feet. Just kind of looked at me for a moment. <laughs> And then uh, kept going. Oh, but, I love that. Yeah. I mean, he really hung there, just staring at me very cutely. All right. I'm looking it up right now. You're looking up butterflies? I'm looking up the spiritual significance of the monarch butterfly. Of the monarch specifically. Well, is there something? We don't know. Well, let's find out. Uh huh. It's a sign <laughs> of rebirth and transformation. Uh-huh. Um, a common monarch's butterfly spiritual meaning is that they're symbols of rebirth, change, and transformation. Therefore, seeing this beautiful creature is a sign that you need to change. You have to make the right changes in your life. Beautiful. How about that, people? Go out and enjoy the butterflies. We're having some change here. It just felt like a prophecy to see them all. It was like biblical. It was amazing. I was blown away by how beautiful it was. Maybe that's why I couldn't get any of my errands done. Oh, is that I was supposed to just be at home walking. (laughs) <laughs> oh, okay. See, it doesn't, t- it doesn't take me a lot to be blown away by everything in the world. Yeah. You've probably realized that about me by now. I'm just perpetually mystified by the everything. Yeah. Well, it's easily done when you 
don't pretend to know it all. Right? <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. I think so. All right. So um, we're going to get somebody on the line. We're going to get Tammy on the line now. All right. And then we're rocking and rolling here. This is fun to have you here. Yeah. It's uh, it's great. It's so funny because I guess you're going to do this once a month with me. Yeah. So I always text to make sure you're set up for the next one. And you're like, and every second Tuesday of the month, like you've got it all figured <laughs> out. And I'm like, yeah, I don't remember that. So as the second Tuesday of the month is coming, someone needs to give Dunderhead a heads up and say, hey, the second Tuesday of the month is coming. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm booked ahead like two weeks on these things now. That's great. Everyone wants to come and do these, and I'm so thrilled. Yay. Isn't that nice? Yeah. I had forgotten to, to put in Tammy in others. the system here, so I'm putting her in right now. All right. So you have to text me to get on the air because I have to program you into our system, and then I have to call you. That's how the system works. So 818-437-0886. That's my cell phone. Text me, and then I will put you in the system. And everybody's welcome to get on the list, even if you've had a reading before. But if you've had a reading before with us, then you kind of drop to the bottom of the list because we have to get folks on that haven't had a chance yet because we always have a waiting list, and that's just and that's just fair. And I'm the queen of fair. I'm a, I'm a lot of things, but not fair is not one of them. All right, we're getting Tammy on the line right now. I remember to pull it down before the bloop, bloop, bloop from Skype. See, I'm getting so good at this. <laughs> You having a kind of out there day where you're just one foot in the fairy garden? Well, I, I was intending as much a day of writing. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, I had an airy fairy moment where I drove off without my gas cap. Oh. So then, yeah, I was off to find myself a gas cap. <laughs> oh, it, it, it was gone forever? <laughs> um, well, uh, yes. Um, a lovely gentleman ran over it. Oh. So it was it was more than gone it was dead <laughs> oh okay I had it a car. was flattened like a pancake i had pancake. a car thing yesterday where out of the blue the red came on my dashboard and said one of my tires only had 15 pound pressure in it and then i 15 went 15 pounds that's it really that's it. yeah that's nothing <laughs> yeah that's nothing and then i went to go put air in the tire and it didn't look flat right so i put a bunch of air in it then it said it was up to 25 should be 35 for my tires so i just made that work went to work and then it had gone down a couple I went to uh, Patty's last night to do Living with the Dead episode 20 and then came back and I stopped on the way home at a gas station and filled it up and thought, well, I'm going to put a lot in it so that it can sit overnight and drain down so I can take it to the mechanic in the morning. And then I woke up this morning and nothing from the sensor. The tire looks fine. Yeah. Mercury retrograde is fun. Tammy, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? How are you? Nice to hear your voice. Nice to hear yours. What, wait, uh, say hi to Rebecca, and how can we help you, love? Hi, sweetheart. I was just wondering, I've always wanted to know if I could, like, if y'all could, like, get messages from my mom and my dad. Sure. That has passed. Yeah. Yeah, your mama especially. Do I, do I need to give you na their name? You don't, you don't need to. Your, your mom especially, not for me, your mom especially is so strong with you. I mean, just so strong with you. You mm -hmm. guys were really close. Yes, we were best friends. <laughs> yeah, totally best friends, right? She's around all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. She she, she worries that you're not um she, she worries about that you're too hard on yourself and that you're not um allowing yourself the playfulness that you had when you were a kid. Right. She's, I'm not. <laughs> she's showing me you as a kid and then she's saying she needs to go back to being like this yeah i've changed a lot yeah i've had a lot of health problems and stuff yeah that'll do it right i've got diabetes and kidney trouble now and a lot of stuff going on yeah what are you doing for your diabetes sweetie yeah uh going to kidney doctors yeah I got the kidneys too. I'm just just starting out, but I, I'm trying to stop it from getting worse. So I'm I'm all about the kidney health and the pancreas health. These are two cranky organs yeah. I've dealt with for a while. What? Oh, what, what, I just went to the kidney doctor the other day, but they're making me come back because I had a fatty liver. Mm -hmm. And um. Uh, He's making me come back to do other tests. I don't know what they're going to do. Okay. But, All right. Uh, how, how much water do you drink? Uh, I drink. <laughs> no, I'm not as much as I should. 
Yeah. I, but I, I cut off the Coke, Good. cut the Sprite, but Good. I drink different stuff like water, juice, stuff like that. If you would cut out the juice and the Sprite for a while and up your water to uh-huh. like eight of these little babies a day, eight of the 16 ounce bottles, your kidneys yeah. would, would, you would see an improvement in your kidneys in the next blood test. Yeah. Really an improvement. Do you see my dad around me? I do, but he hangs back. He hangs back more. He was a more reserved person, yeah. right? Is he? Yeah. I just wondered because like, I was in the room when he died, mm-hmm. and I yeah. didn't know if he knew I was there because he was unconscious. He did. But I, did, I just wondered if he knew I was in the room with him. No, he did, sweetheart. He, he had more of a reserved personality than your mom, right? Your mom was a little brighter and yeah. sparklier. Right. Yeah. No, he's around. He's just quiet. They're both asking me about your health. They keep asking about your health. They um they yeah. want you to take care of yourself. They just feel like you're not concentrating on taking care of yourself as much as you should. That was the first thing your yeah. mom said. She doesn't take good she doesn't take good enough care of herself. Yeah. Yeah, your dad. I haven't been. Hang on, Rebecca. <laughs> your dad. Um, there's a protective energy there that he wants to offer you. There's um, like he doesn't want you to be so afraid anymore, and he wants yeah. to lift that from you. I think that's kind of where she know is getting that like standing back, like he stands behind you. Yeah, shielding, mm-hmm. and it makes sense with the kidneys. Kidneys are an organ where we hold fear. Yeah. So I don't know if there was something traumatic in your life, um, and a fear that you're still holding in your body, uh, but your dad uh, wants to be able to get closer to you uh, to help lift that from you. I just keep hearing him say, well, I want her to stop being so afraid. Yeah, but that's one thing I've been working on because I used to have, like, I've been told I was an empath, sure. and I used to be able to see things. And I have seen my father-in-law in spirit before. Mm-hmm. And I've had messages come through before, but it's like been a long, long time. And I felt like I've been blocked. No. And no. so I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to get back to where I can get those messages again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what's going on, mm-hmm. sweetie. <clears throat> you haven't been blocked. Here's what's going on <clears throat> with your dad. Not so much your mom, because she stays very much in the picture, but also with your empathic yeah. abilities. is It's very common for folks that are empaths to have trouble with their kidneys and their livers, because what your kidneys yeah. do and your livers is they, they fil- your liver, they filter out all of the toxicity in your body. And oftentimes, empaths uh-huh. take a lot of folks' energetic toxicity in, and they don't know how to take it out. They, you, know, you bring it in, you don't know how to filter it out. So your... Um, Your empathic core is a filtration system the same way that your kidneys and your liver are a filtration system. And you have to learn to let things go. So when your kidney levels get high, it's because your kidneys are not working enough to eject everything out that they're taking in and it causes damage to the kidneys in the same way that you damage yourself spiritually when you're taking a bunch of stuff in and you're not ejecting stuff out. So the, the universe has put a little bit of a block on your empathic stuff until you can Mm -hmm. learn how to filter stuff out because you were holding so much in emotionally and spiritually that you're you actually started to affect your body physically Mm -hmm. does that make sense and so how do i how do i get all that (laughs) you need how do i get you need to start letting things go sweetheart you need to yeah the same way that you need to drink a bunch of water and let the water uh, filter out yeah. so your kidneys will get happier. You, in the same way that you need to do yeah. that, you need to um, uh, l- when you take energetic messages and imprints and energy in from people, uh, energetic mm-hmm. energy. There's a redundancy, Sheena. <laughs> you need to find a way to let it out. It, it's like when you, um, it's like when you make pasta. If you put the pasta in the strainer, <clears throat> if you put the pasta in a bowl with the hot water. The hot water stays in there and it's gross and eventually it ruins the pasta. You have to put it in a strainer so that everything that you don't need can come out and only what you want stays. And that's what you have to do with with empathy. You you know, naturally as empathic people, it's like we don't have a screen door in our door. So we take everything Uh in when the door is open. We have to learn how to flush stuff back out. I know I had a dream about them the other night. Uh, 
you know, about them. I didn't know if that was them coming to me or. Oh, yeah, sure. Or just, and I had a dream about my Aunt Shirley, and she just passed away like a few years ago. Yeah. And I just wondered if that was her coming to me to let me know if she's all right, too. Absolutely. Because it, I used to get stuff like that all the time. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, but, honey. It's safer. Uh, it's safer for them to come when you're yeah. asleep because okay. then they don't worry that they're that they're damaging you as much empathically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like around three something every night I wake sure. up. Sure. Witching hour. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I do. I like wake up around three something every night. Yeah. The real witching but, hour. Mm-hmm. Um I have one more question sure. and this is not got it ain't got to do with me, but it's got to do with my nephew on my husband's side of the family. Uh-huh. Like, um, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I, um, my uh, nephew, his name was Little Jimmy, and he hung himself when he was 13, I think. Uh-huh. And, but they didn't know if he hung himself or if somebody did it, and I was wondering if you've seen him around me or if you could get, like, if you've seen anything from him at all. You want that? You want me to take that? Go for it, then. Okay. Um, I, 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 I do think that he hung himself. Mm-hmm. I think that he had, um, he struggled with depression. And was there some kind of a overuse yeah. of substance involved? Was he doing drugs or too much drinking? Uh, him? No. He was, uh, I don't think he was. He was, he was with depression bad because. Yeah. Of his mom and dad were split up and his stepmom was mean to him. Yeah. I think he might have gotten involved in something that you didn't know about as far as something oh, really? that he was taking that was making him more sad. Yeah, getting involved in something, some kind of substance that he thought was helping him and numbing it. It was actually making it worse. But he... Well, um, so he did He did hang himself, hang himself. Yeah, he did. And he just wasn't yeah. happy, sweetie. He's, he's much happier now. I, uh, it was, this, was yeah. a, this was a while ago? Yes, it's been a long time ago. Yeah, I don't, I don't see him around. I think he may have come back. Oh, really? That's yeah. great. Yeah. Who in the family? That's who in the family is new since he since he passed? Oh, uh, I've got grandsons that's new. Um, we got a bunch of kids that's new. Yeah, a one a, one of them. One of them is where he is. Yeah. One of them. Yeah, one of them oh, is where he is. Which one? Um. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure out which yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have two. I have Luke and Grayson. And then my cousins have Cruz. Um, I said Cruz. I kept this. And Kager and um, Axel. Which one? And there's a, um, which Axel. One? Which one was the same, um, the same, the same of your siblings that was his parent? Uh, which, which one was the same sibling? Yeah, who was he? Was, have one kid. He was one of your siblings' kids, right? Or your husband's siblings' kids? Yes, it was my my husband's sister's kid. Okay, so who's her? Who are her grandchildren? Her grandchildren. She doesn't have any. Okay. Because that was her only, it's, her only son. It's it's one of them. It's not one of yours. It's one of the other. It's one of his siblings, not yours. It's one of Randy's, my husband's siblings. Yeah. His, or my husband's brother's kids or yeah. something. Yeah, must be. Yeah, or must be. Kids. Yeah, must be. Uh-huh. Okay. What's, what's most important, and this is what was coming through when you were asking, was it doesn't matter. It's done. Oh, absolutely. Right? And so that's it why I was like, matter. yeah, you better right. take this because I wasn't sure I'm where this was okay. coming from. Yeah. And and that's really the energy of this is that it it's yeah. complete, you know, however it went down then, th- that energy is complete now and reborn anew. Yeah. Right? Well, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is wonderful. But, yeah, I appreciate y'all because, I, you know, I just, I, I, I have been under a lot of stress, and I've been trying to figure out how to get back to myself. Good. And it, it, the, uh, you know, just I sit around the house all day and don't do nothing. Right. 
Well, and um, I wanted to speak into that um, as an empath. The greatest tool that you can give yourself in terms of, you know, that strainer. <laughs> yeah, is, get that strainer. Is knowing what is yours and what, is, what isn't. You know, for me, yeah. I'm not afraid to feel anything. It's one of my greatest tools as a healer to feel, to perceive through my feeling and to actually feel what the a client or a Nobody is. believes you. Uh, no, and don't have nobody talk to. Yeah. Mm. About it. Because my old man, he doesn't believe in it. And he, he drinks all the time. So that's put yeah. it with him. Well, start a journal. You've got yourself <laughs> to talk to. And spirit, spirit yeah. will talk to you. Start talking to yourself. It's amazing uh-huh. how much you can do. Uh-huh. I talk to myself all the time. <laughs> people, yeah. I think people in stores I think I'm too. crazy. I do too. But I appreciate it. <laughs> we, we appreciate you, sweetheart. Thank you for being lovely, and thank you for the call, and we love you, and we're looking out for you. So we're sending you lots of love and light. Beautiful. Mm. I would talk to you again, but you would think I was talking to a caller. <laughs> 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 I'm scared to talk to Rebecca because she <laughs> thinks I'm talking to a caller. She's what like, can I, say? I don't want to talk so to you, Sheena. For I'm the looking next for the one. callers. <laughs> It is exciting, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's totally fun. Yeah. Okay. I plugged that we're going to be, I didn't say any names or details, but I plugged that we might be doing a little workshop before you got here. Yeah. I'm so excited about uh, about these workshop series. Yes. I have f- four I'm going to do now, Ooh. not including mine, just four partnered with people, four yeah. series. Look yeah. Partnered, partnered with beautiful light workers that I love. Yeah. I love that story. I just love to partner people. You know, I'm partner with people. You know, I'm all about the ensemble. Mm-hmm. I love to do things in groups with people. I'll mm-hmm. do things by myself, and I, you know, I'm okay at it. It's just I like it better when it's a group. It's fun. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah. Like how how are you handling this Mercury retrograde? Um, I I don't know. I guess pretty well. <laughs> do you not do you not believe I, in the Mercury I, retrograde either? No, no. I mean, you know, I I don't really um, necessarily look to see what's coming. I I usually look when I go, what the heck is going on? Yeah, <laughs> which definitely one of the last ones. I I think I called you and asked you what the heck is going on. Yeah, because it was really impacting me. Yeah, this one's a crotch puncher. I just started a couple of days ago, and already I feel like my crotch is perpetually punched. It's uh, it's it's just cr- it's just everything just went haywire all of a sudden. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, my life is pretty smooth right now in terms of that. Okay. Physically, though, yeah, I've been feeling feeling, yeah, I feeling feel, a crotch punch. I feel great <laughs> physically, but I mean, I got done at like about eleven o'clock last mm-hmm. night. We do the the episode with Patty at nine o'clock on Mondays mm-hmm. every other Monday. And normally I get home and I'm all excited and I do hours of like computer work. I got home, I could barely keep my eyes open. Mm. And, and I was dragging this morning coming here. I've just been exhausted. Mm. And that can be the Mercury retrograde too. It's not like me to be exhausted. Mm. And I've got our gathering on Sunday. So I have a whole nother thing I got to put together, you know? Oh yeah. Who's your, um, who's the speaker for Sunday? Uh, D. Wallace. Oh. Wonderful spiritual being. Yes. And Patty is going to come and do a little, um, elemental invoke energy invocation to open the night Ooh. it's gonna be fun are you coming well yeah all right good now you gotta come because i talked it up like yeah because you made me say yeah, yeah on the radio well I, the thing i think is so wonderful about d is that she was one of the first successful actors i know to come out and say no i have a spiritual life and it um it informs everything that i do mm-hmm. and managed to make both of those worlds work yeah. so i think she's really an inspiration for people she's yeah. amazing have you met her yeah hasn't she been at like almost every Racing Vibration event or no? No. I don't I think she's been to one. Met her then. Oh, you're going to love her. I'm mistaking her for someone else. Okay. You're going to love her. Well, Rebecca grew up without television. <laughs> so, for the most part. So she's an entertainment industry challenged in a lot of I ways. Am, I am. All right. We're going to get Tina on the phone right now uh, in this moment. Great caller today. Lots of folks. In, whenever I have you, it's always all the folks that need so much help. Yeah. You know, it was much more light with Patty this morning. <laughs> and then you come on, it's all the folks that are just, you know, gut wrenchingly sad. Is that you is that you that brings that on? Well, I hope not. <laughs> it's funny because when I have Alex here, it's everyone who needs to get healed. It, it's like the callers come dependent on who I have here. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, for some reason it uh it hung up on me. So let's try this again. We might have just been talking and she might not have known that. She might have been sitting there going, why are these weirdos still talking? I'm trying to <laughs> to pick up. I hope I put her number in right. Sometimes that happens too. I hope I announced your number right. It's 818-437-0886, folks. That's 818-437-0886. 
Yeah, I think oh, I announced it wrong. <laughs> literally texting her right now. Calling you now. Okay. We're waiting. Let me double check and make sure I got the number right. Because, you know, I do dumb things. For somebody so smart, I'm also very, very stupid. No, it's trying. I think I might, maybe I wrote her number down wrong. Let's go look. This is the human element of Lightworkers Unite. Uh huh. Oh, I did. I wrote the number down wrong. Okay. Yep. All right, Tina, we're getting to you in a second, honey. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Silly girl. All right, here we go. One more time here. But luckily, now I know how to edit. I know how to do this whole thing. Yay. Patty's always like, I'm just amazed at how you, how you can do all these different things at one time. Yeah, it is impressive. I'm just naturally an air traffic controller, I think. All right, let's try this again here, my friends. We're coming for you, Tina. All right, I keep turning you up because you're very quiet. Am I? Am yeah. I so very you're quiet? You're so quiet. Bruh. You're like somewhere between a phone <laughs> sex operator and that lady who comes on the radio <laughs> at three in the morning and plays love songs. You're like, <laughs> so, you're like so quiet. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> like so quiet. All right, let's hope this is working uh, now. I'm not quiet in my headset. Now, I know the number's right this time because I checked it. So I know the number is right. And I know it came right from Tina. I know I have the number right. Doing it again. Uno mas. Yeah, it's it's going. Is it ringing? No, it's not connecting yet. Skype sometimes has a small issue. And this yeah. is the small Skype issue. So this is the time where we go check it. Do the last two weeks? No, nope, it just was not connecting. The last two weeks, the Facebook Live had a problem. The only two times I've ever had Facebook Live have a problem were on Tuesday at 5 o'clock. But there we are, and we're rolling right along. So it's not having a problem right now. Yay. So the, the, then the Skype has to have a problem because it's the Mercury retrograde hell. Huh. So let's try one more time. And if not, we'll skip to somebody else, and we'll come back to you, Tina. We hate that. We'd like to be with you right now. But um, sometimes we're going to get, we'll get Michelle on. So, Michelle, we're coming for you. <coughs> let me text her and let her know that she's going to be next. It doesn't even seem to be ringing. Yeah, it's not connecting. Hear that weird, like, space noise? That Skype's thing now. Isn't that creepy? It's like being in the ICU. Yeah, that is just weird. Boop, boop. Right? It's like you're lost on a planet and there's nothing but the beeping of your signal that no one can hear because you're stuck on Mars. That's just some creepiness. That's some creepy stuff. So what have you been up to, my friend? Let's talk about Rebecca for a minute. Yeah, well, I am uh, almost finished putting together the final details of my next journey to Teotihuacan, Mexico. Beautiful. Where in Mexico is that? Uh, so it's just a 40, about a 40-minute drive outside of Mexico City. Okay. Uh, and yeah, it's the city of pyramids, the place where human becomes God. It's beautiful. And it really is a city of pyramids. There is not one pyramid. There are several hmm. surrounded by all these wonderful, amazing temples. And they've all stayed intact all this time. Yeah, That's beautiful. Yeah. They're very, um, dedicated. That's wonderful. Dedicated to, uh, the preservation down there. And, and yet... They still let us go in and meditate inside of them and climb mm. up on top of the pyramids and meditate on top of them. Isn't that nice? Yes. And you lead the meditations? Yes. That's beautiful. Well, spirit does. Through you? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes oh. through me. Sometimes you just sit there. Sometimes and we just sit there. <laughs> no, I, I do. I, I do talk probably too much, you know. Okay. <laughs> my friend T, who she's my trip coordinator on all of these trips, and she's... She's like, you do realize that your trips are like no other, no nobody else's trips down here. Like yeah, you pretty much you go all day <laughs> with you. Oh, okay. But people love it. But do you actually do guided meditation? <clears throat> yes, we do guided meditation. We do rituals in different places. It just kind of depends on what the moment is calling That's for. And um, the last few journeys that I took down there, they were um, healer focused. So okay. They were, I was teaching the shamanic healing techniques. Nice. Um, and so those were great and really intensive because yeah. we had 
part of the day out on the grounds in the temples and on the pyramids, and then we'd have the other part of the day in the classroom nice. doing egg cleansings or fire cleansings or whatnot. Uh, so this trip is going to be open to all, and it's going to be the mother and child reunion. So we're really going to be uh, healing that feminine energy inside of ourselves. Rebecca's always healing I'm always feminine I'm energy. I love healing the no feminine. No one's feminine energy is safe around Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> And that means, you know, really reuniting with that mother inside of you. Yeah. Um, healing your relationship with your biological mother, but sure. also really, truly with the divine mother. My mom is laughing right now. Right? Yeah. She's good laughing. Luck. Like, She's oh, like good, that, good that, that's, that's done. <laughs> yeah. She always laughs about stuff like that. <laughs> that's just a, she's just, she's a trip. Still laughing in spirit at me. Yeah. I'm not when people would say things like, oh, maybe you need to, you and your mom need to sit down and have a talk, my mom would just laugh. Because <laughs> nobody ever knew how close we were. She'd be like, ugh. <laughs> oh, my mic went out. Oh, there we go. Especially when it was psychics. They'd be like, oh, maybe you need to connect to your mom. And she'd start laughing like, that one's not a psychic. Because, you know. I think you're carrying mer Mercury retrograde. Because, like, my mic keeps going no, out. No, I'm I telling you. Any it's, problems it's Mercury retrograde. It's not, it's everything. <laughs> It's just happening. Look at that poor trying to call poor Tina and nothing's happening. So now we're going to try to call Michelle and let's hope something happens when we call her because uh, we couldn't even get to the calling part. Yeah. Are we getting the ICU? Yeah. Creepy It's sound. ringing. No, this one's ringing. All oh, right. It likes this one. It just didn't want to call Tina for some reason. Welcome to the show, Michelle. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. How about yourself? Wonderful. It's great to talk to you and hear your voice. Say hi to Rebecca. Hi, hello, Rebecca. How are you? Hello, hello. I'm doing well. So how may we help I'm you honored. today? Oh, we're honored to have you. How can we help you, my friend? Um, well, are we able to ask two questions or just one? You ask whatever you want, sweetheart. Okay. So um, I'm looking for a job. Uh -huh. um, I lost my job in November. I'm currently working a temporary job. It's not the best job. It's only a minimum wage. And I wanted to know, like... Um, what do you guys see me doing or when do you see me finding a better job? And then also, of course, so I to thank you and of course, um, love. Everybody wants to know the same thing, Everyone right? Everyone wants to know about <laughs> love, except me. Everyone wants to know about love. Um, uh, okay, so let's do job first and I'll let Rebecca handle love. Um, <laughs> thank you. Here's the thing about your job is that you, you sort of have compartmentalized your life, Michelle, into uh -huh. things that I love and my job. So you're, it's like, so the problem is, is that you're not thinking of your job as being something that you love. So you're not finding uh -huh. a job that you love. You're thinking of your job as oh. that horrible thing that pays my bills so that I can then have my life that I love. Yeah. And, and I, I can understand that because right now the job I have, I hate. Yeah. Yeah. But there's been a lot of them yeah. that you haven't liked. Yeah. That you've thought of as well, yeah. this thing that I have to do <laughs> until I do what I really want to do. So now is the time, yeah. now that you're dealing with this temp thing that you really know you don't want, now is the time, sweetheart, to start thinking about what do I want? What, what could I do that could make me happy? What, what would make me happy so that I don't have to have a job that I hate? Like, how could I find a compromise and find a job that actually also speaks to my soul and excites me and makes me happy? Do you know? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be yeah. your forever thing that you love more than anything. It can still be, quote, unquote, a day job but wouldn't it be great if it was a day job that you enjoyed or it was you, the thing is is that you need to be doing something that that has some kind of humanistic or spiritual value to it something or people are mm -hmm. getting helped in some way and if you don't have a job mm -hmm. like that you, it just makes you feel dead yes you're absolutely correct you know so as you start looking mm -hmm. for something else because i know you're looking for something else Yes. Start looking for something that you think, man, that might make me feel good to go to. It might still be a J-O-B, and it might still feel like I'm punching a clock, but it would be something that I at least felt was helping the world in some way. Does that make sense? Perfect sense, because I actually am intuitive as well. Yeah, right? So you know. You know what yeah. makes you happy, what doesn't make you happy. It's almost like there's a fear in you to be happy, honey, or a feeling like you think you don't deserve to be happy. And that makes me sad because uh -huh. you have such a beautiful soul and you totally deserve to be uh -huh. happy. You know? Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. You bet. You're a beautiful soul too. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> Both of you are. Thank you, sweetheart. Mm, thank you. And now Rebecca, 
Thank She'll you. handle your love life. Rebecca on well, I love. Might, I might butt in. <laughs> Rebecca <you>. on love. <laughs> Rebecca on love. Rebecca love. on love. All right. So I have good news for you. Yes. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. I see and I Yay! feel I feel the opening to the big warm fuzzies. So this is good news and, and I really want to commend you on all of the work that you've been doing on yourself because that mm -hmm. is what is cr has created this opening. And uh -huh. yes, and so you know there's there are a few little like strings still kind of like attached to you. Um, mm -hmm. from uh, maybe not the last one, it might have been a few ones ago, um, that you haven't uh -huh. quite shook loose. So I just encourage you to shake those loose a little bit better, a little bit more better. <laughs> All right. And okay. yeah. Shake because, them loose. Shake them loose. <laughs> shake them loose, is, baby. It is coming soon and, and it's a worthy one. It's a worthy one. And so you really Yay. don't want to bring this, this other into that. Mm -hmm. So make sure you really finish, oh finish that cleaning up and, uh -huh. you know, and this piece is really for everyone on love because, you know, yes, you're right. Everybody wants love. Everybody wants to attract that perfect partner, but we attract to yeah. ourselves, you know, what we are, right? We, we attract yeah. to ourselves based on where we're at in our lives. And just as Sheena was saying, how much we believe we deserve happiness and love, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. those little yeah. bit of strings, you know what they are. Right, you know what they are, mm -hmm. and and in part, it's that piece of believing in the possibility, mm -hmm. right? That uh -huh. you could be in that kind of partnership where you are the queen, sweetheart. And I don't mean queen because you're dominant. Oh my I God, mean you're gonna make me cry. Queen because you are yeah. honored. Yes. You know, you are honored. Oh and, yeah. And a true queen is both honored and she honors. She serves, you know, her kingdom, uh -huh. right? She serves. Yeah. So uh, that's the true queen. It's not a princess. It's a queen, and that's what you've really been yearning for and haven't quite believed is possible, but it is possible and it's coming. And so just oh, clean God. up those little bit of strings that are kind of keeping you in princess land, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank God. Um, <laughs> so how do I, what's your best, what's your suggestion for me shaking those cords? Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a big question, isn't it? <laughs> you got to pluck those things out. I mean, you need to sit down and talk to somebody about why it is that those cords are in you and, mm -hmm. and, and, and sit down and talk to yourself and, and have a talk about go back and figure out what holes in you were somebody allowed to hook those cords into. Because if you go back and you look at where those cords are from past relationships and past hurts, you will mm -hmm. find that somewhere there was a weakness in you where the cord went whoop and got in. And, and yeah. um, the best way to kick those cords out, I think, is to find those places in you and heal yourself mm -hmm. and then elevate mm -hmm. your vibration to a place where the hooks can't come back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? You guys are, I swear, you're going to make me cry. And I don't know if it was in the long-term relationship I was in yeah. or in a relationship where it was like um, maybe a, a year or two years that lasted, but it was extremely intense where... Yeah. Um, myself and this other person like we're in love with each other never really got to a romantic spot but it was like it was this it was this we were romantic you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, and there was, was a lot of there was a lot of damage there on the other person's part yes. right that was a damaged yes. person who couldn't get it together enough to love you the way that on the depths and the levels that you wanted to be loved absolutely and and that's yeah. hard because you're giving all this stuff and then little tiny bits of stuff is leaking back at you. So you're putting out mm -hmm. like a tidal wave and you're getting back like a drip. And <laughs> and it's hard yeah. because obviously there was such a soul connection there that it was so yeah. familiar and so strong and so hot and so amazing. But there just was not emotionally that much coming back at you because this person yeah. just didn't have it in them. But they kept you You're there and they kept sure. those ties because they want you to come back and do it all over again. But it would be the same mm. thing over and over and over again. So that person needs to let you go. Yeah. You know? And, you know, I need to let them go. That's the part. And I swear you guys are going to make me cry. That's the part that I do have to let go of because, yeah. I mean, even though we haven't talked for like eight months, I still send them text every once in a while. Like, you know, yeah. the song reminds me of you, that type of stuff. And I have to completely cut that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sometimes you get a text back, right? That's just a real, like, two-word no. text. No. No? I don't get any text back. 
No, but I just figured, you know, I am love. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I'm just going to be myself because I am love. I believe that, you know, to love people wholly and completely, no matter what they've done, you know, everybody deserves love. And so I just love and let it go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But wait a minute. Energetically, do you feel like you're getting a text back? Because I'm feeling that things are coming yes. back. Yeah. So, okay. There's just a tremendous amount of fear. Some people are scared to death of a deep connection. Just mm-hmm. literally uh-huh. scares the shit out of them. Mm-hmm. But you're yeah. not afraid and, of that and deep connection. No. You're, you're not afraid of it and you're ready for it. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. And, you know, my advice in finding these, these strings, I mean, I think you've just found at least one or maybe even two of them just in this conversation. But you can feel them in your body. Yeah. yeah? You can feel them uh, in your yeah. body. Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to know their origin. You just have to feel your mm-hmm. way to their origin. Does yeah. that make sense? Uh-huh. So if yes, you can feel it sense. in your body, then just, you know, start with it where it's at. And you can put your hand on that place in your body and close your eyes yeah. and just use your breath and breathe into that place in your body where that feeling is, where you feel that string. And it may start to move. Okay, most likely it will start to move through the body. Yeah. It may also start revealing itself to you, giving you information, giving you names and places and faces and moments, showing you those moments. You know, the, the important mm-hmm. thing is to allow it to keep moving. So it's not so much to mm-hmm. not gather that evidence. Um, it's, uh-huh. it's to kind of let it go as it comes. Does that make sense? And trust that when you're all Perfect done, sense. yeah, when you're all done, mm-hmm. you'll know what you need to know about it. Um, but in the mm-hmm. meantime, you really want to keep it moving. You don't want to get too engaged in the story about it and too engaged in the need to mm-hmm. know about it. And don't activate mm-hmm. that inner psychologist just yet. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because okay. it's it's actually, yeah. you can allow it without knowing anything about it and just using uh-huh. your breath and allowing it to move and breathing that love that you are mm-hmm. into that uh-huh. space. Okay. So you're going to kind of have a mm-hmm. dual awareness. You're going to have the awareness of that string and you're going to have uh-huh. simultaneously the awareness of the love that you are. Okay. And you can Thank breathe you. your love yeah. into it and it'll start to move and yeah. eventually it will completely unwind from your body. And it can happen in wow. one sitting. It can, sometimes it, it requires several sittings. Mm-hmm. And usually for me, when it requires more than one sitting, it's because there's something mm-hmm. that I do need to know about it. There's something that I uh-huh. need to understand before it can completely under, unwind. Does that make sense? Wow. Perfect. And I have to share something with you. Yeah. So as you're saying that, I know where it's at. And, and I, again, once again, I swear you guys are going to make me cry, and I'm trying not to. But, it's okay to cry. Um, we cry every day. I do. <laughs> I know, but it'll mess up my makeup, and I'm out. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> the, the thing is, is um, I just recently, I kind of started feeling attached to this person again. Mm-hmm. Like, because I've been feeling their energy. Like, like you said, they send me, like, psychic right. texts. You know, right. To, to the eight-month-old. I month can feel them yearning for me. Yeah. And... And uh, it's, I can I can tell you right now I know where it's at. It's in my solar plexus because uh-huh. recently, sure ever since this happened, mm-hmm. I started gaining weight again too. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So it's like a toxic spot, you know. And I'm yeah. thinking, why am I gaining weight? I'm not even doing anything. You know, I'm, I'm exercising and doing all this stuff, and it's like I've I've gained like seven pounds since this has happened. Yeah, because you're like, holding on to this Michelle. person. <laughs> you're holding on to this person, so you're physically holding on to weight and water and stuff. This person had a thing where. Um, they had trouble being their true person, their true self. And they could yes, be their true you self with so you. You are absolutely correct. And um, so there's a desperate, there's a, so, so for some people that can't actually come out and be their true self, they, mm-hmm. they're okay to sort of, what my mama used to call, live in their head. Mm-hmm. They're okay to have a relationship mm-hmm. with you in their head and never mm-hmm. actually let it be what it's supposed to be. And then they stop talking to you out of fear but in their in their mind, mm-hmm. they're still having the relationship with you, even though they're not physically talking to you in the real world. And some people sort of live yes. their lives uh, not connecting the same way that you don't connect what you love and the job, not connecting mm-hmm. who they love and their real life. And they just sort of keep this running scenario wow. going on in their head and heart and then never mm-hmm. actually contact you. Because they're still playing the romance wow. out, but so you can feel when they're doing it because you have that tie. You can feel when mm-hmm. when they're ruminating on you or reflecting on what happened or missing you or thinking about you or fantasizing that you were still together, and then you feel like you're getting a tug in the solar plexus, and that's wow. you know that's that's what's happening. But this poor person who hasn't done the work on themselves 
is just not ready to come to the table and and live an adult, authentic, open life in a relationship oh with God. anybody, you yeah. know? Oh, my God, you're so right. I, I just told a friend yesterday, that is so strange. I just told a friend yesterday that it feels like, like we're together again. I said, why is yeah. that? Mm-hmm. Why do I feel that? Like as if we're a couple again. And, and um, she said it's because you they're thinking about you mm-hmm. and just – you know it's, it is a woman and she's Muslim so yes she cannot be herself of course of course you no know? yeah. yeah and so it's like but it's like she's uh, and I can feel I, that's why it's so funny so that because I thought to myself that she attached something to me again that I allow her to attach something to me because I love her so much and it's, it, obviously it's yes mm-hmm. you know the answer to that is yes well mm-hmm. and here's the thing about a soul tie mm-hmm. a soul tie doesn't necessarily go away I mean you can get cords yeah. out but a tie, that's, a, uh-huh. that's somebody that's been in your life from lifetime to lifetime. It's a soul pod person. And for whatever reason yes. in this life, they're not getting it together. Maybe they never get together in any life. But they're a person that you encounter again when you're at home between your soul school lives. And you know them. They're your, they're your pod of people from your, your tribe from home. So yes. the thing about a soul tie is it never really goes away. But you learn how to deal with it. So you'll always have a, okay. a piece of you that will reflect on her and, and you'll think mm-hmm. mm, and you'll have that little feeling of nostalgia. Whereas other people you've mm-hmm. dated, you probably don't even think about it all ever or think, you think, oh God, why did I date that one? This one will stay and it will <laughs> yes. ruminate around inside of you because of that tie. And it's kind of sad uh-huh. when a person, you have a soul tie to someone and they just won't, they, they just won't find a way to make the relationship work. Even if they say, look, can we just be friends? We can be each other's lives. I mean, anything because they're so scared. And it's hard because like I said, oftentimes these people are still, it's the relationship continues in their head and their heart. They're just mm-hmm. not contacting you. And, and the thing that's, that, mm-hmm. um, that you just have to find a way to, to put it in a place where it's like, I don't eat sugar anymore because it's real bad for me. So instead of being angry mm-hmm. that I don't eat sugar, I put sugar in a place of, remember when mom made those peppermint sundaes and they were great, but I don't do that mm-hmm. anymore. And that's what you kind of have mm-hmm. to do with a soul tie. You have to put it in a place of, wasn't that a lovely thing, but that's not what's going to go on in my life anymore. So that you don't think mm-hmm. horribly about it. And, and it's, it's a scary thing. So I'll tell a story from my life, which I don't know if we're supposed to, light workers and nurses to tell stories from their lives, but guess what? If you're my client, you know I do. So... <laughs> So I dated somebody once who lived in their head and never could Uh quite get there. And then a stupid thing happened Uh because when you're that not sure of who you are, you let other energies come in and you let stupid things happen. And I Mm -hmm. have these dreams like every once in a while when I start to feel like I'm being pulled, I'll go to bed at night and I have these dreams and it's always the same dream. Can't we sit down and talk? Can't we talk? Why didn't we ever talk mm-hmm. about it? We didn't talk about it, bozo, because I tried to talk about it for months and you were like, I can't talk to you. That's why we didn't talk. But in the dreams, it's always, I don't understand why. And so finally, one morning I woke up and I said, look, <laughs> out loud in my bed, I said, look, either stop this or pick up the phone like an adult and call me. And I am happy yes. to work this out and let it go. But this weird mm-hmm. thing with the dreams has got to stop. Uh-huh. And that was the last dream I yes. had like that. Because wow. you sometimes have to say, look, I will always love you. And I understand we're always yes. going to have a tie. But I can't yes. deal with the pulling anymore. Because mm-hmm. I don't feel in this case yes. like she's intentionally trying to mess with you or hurt you. She's just all no. over the place mm-hmm. and just doesn't know who she is. Yes. You know? You're right. And I actually, I did send her a text basically like saying that, you know, even though we don't talk, whatever, I will always love you and I will always be here if you ever really truly need me. And then like you said, I've, I've actually mentally said to her, pick up your phone and call me. Yeah. If you want to talk, pick up the phone, call me, text me. Yeah. I said, you know, stop thinking about me. Just text me already. Yeah. There's a magic thing that I like. It my day. I call it friendship Febreze. When you've, when you've dated somebody or there's been feelings or something weird and somebody can't handle it, some, I always say friendship Febreze, it erases the odors of those nasty crushes. Sometimes the best thing to do is you friendship Febreze it so the other person doesn't feel like you want something from them that they can't handle. Uh-huh. And they feel like okay. it's safe to come back in as a friend, use the F word a lot, and they feel like it's safe to come back in as a friend and then you can have that sort of nice 
buried hatchet and resolution and letting go and closure without them feeling threatened. Because when somebody has really intense feelings for you and they just can't handle it in their life, they stay away from you because they're scared to be around you. And so yeah. if, if, if she knows that she can be around you and you guys can just be buddies, even if it's just at a distance and it's just occasionally a text or something, it would be beautiful closure for both of you and it would be in a way that's like super non-threatening. And sometimes you just have to be the bigger person that says, look, um, I, I miss when we were friends. I love when we were friends. I wish we were pals and just spray that friendship for breeze all over that situation. So somebody <laughs> knows that they can crawl out from under the rock and it's safe, you know, cause it's, it's scary that. and it's scary when you're yeah. trying to enter into a love affair with somebody and you've got all kinds of childhood programming and religious programming and cultural programming and sociological programming and family members and it's t it's terrifying and i didn't my mom was just like be whoever you want just don't date anybody who doesn't have manners just do your thing <laughs> but i did date people who didn't have manners i did she said that to me when i was, eight, when I was 18 my mom said to me out of the blue she said i don't care if you bring home a man or a woman just never bring anyone into this house without manners and then don't you know i did that i love that then i did that of course of course well, i did uh, yeah. i brought home men and women it. without manners <laughs> if, just, if your I'm mother could tool. have instigated a rebellion that was a pretty mild so one so beautiful thank you i love you we love you, you sweetheart we just I, want I you to be happy one more question yeah. if you don't mind please um is uh is the net her name's the net is she one of that those people that is that's worth worth me is that that's something going to happen between the net and i maybe well, again, there's a tie there, right? There's a there's a super strong tie there, but again, uh -huh. there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of cultural and sociological programming happening there. <laughs> ah, you're right. This okay. is this is a pattern with you, right? <laughs> look at look at how you don't want to let her go. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I keep trying, and, and both yeah. of them, I keep trying uh, um, to let them go, and I'm like, yeah, um, and I get stupid when I'm around her, like. Like, I can be myself right now, and then I'll say stupid stuff like, she gave me an avocado, and I said, oh, good fat. I'm thinking, you're such a dork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she kind of reminds you of the one from eight months ago, doesn't she? What's that? She kind of reminds you of the one from eight months ago. Um, yes and no. The one um, from, like, eight months ago is, in some ways, because this one's also, like, she's a Jehovah's Witness, but... Huh. Um, the one from eight months ago is like our relationship was intense. Yeah. I mean, we did everything together. We talked 24 hours practically. I mean, literally we got about two hours sleep. And then when I was at work, we still talk and text and yeah. like, you know, Michelle, every time you go on break, call me. Um, you know, it was, it was intense. That relationship yeah. was just like, mm -hmm. like as if we were, like I said, together, even though we won't, weren't romantic, you know, but we right. did, we went on romantic dates. I mean, I took her and had a picnic and bought her roses and, things like that but um it wasn't like you know intimate mm -hmm. as yeah. far as like you know touching or anything like that mm -hmm. but this one has that same kind of intensity the same kind of intensity uh -huh. but this one's intensity is all pulled inside okay so you can so feel the intensity. michelle find someone different some, find someone who's available not these well <laughs> and let go first that michelle let go is the right message. and then here's michelle my here's go. my big spiritual advice michelle find somebody who will give you more than an avocado <laughs> <laughs> not, not that oh I've ever God, turned down too. a free avocado, and Rebecca can attest to that. I never turned down yeah. a. I would take an avocado from the ghost of Charles Manson because that's how bad I want an avocado. But you have to find oh somebody God. who actually knows how to give their heart and not some weird yeah. little strange thing. Like I'm just going to give you an avocado yeah. because I'm a Jehovah's Witness. And maybe, sweetheart, stay away from the extremely religious girls in the closet. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting you know, pattern. That's I know. Weird. I didn't even know she was like this and, and, until after I already was attracted to her. And then, and then I asked her, you know, are you going to make a Christmas ornament? She says, uh, I don't celebrate Christmas. I thought, oh, man, here we go. Right. Here you go. <laughs> got to get another Muslim. Well, I, I want to add a little. I'm not sure what I'm going to add. Um, <laughs> that's how we do it here how we on the Sheet of Metal Experience. We open our mouth and then we find out. Uh, but I was doing a little long-distance healing on you. Yes, while, you were. Well, you rubbed your tummy. Talking. Yeah. Um, and so th really the message is, um, at the very least, move that energy up to, into your heart center, 
okay? Okay. Uh -huh. um, move that energy up to your heart center. Maybe in the evenings, just spend some time uh, holding your hand, your right hand over your shoulder plexus, uh -huh. okay? Mm -hmm. And you can kind of just like hover just above it until you feel that heat, mm. making little mm -hmm. circles, okay? Uh, okay. clockwise circles and then just slowly when you feel that heat kind of gather in your hand you can start to bring it up into your heart center okay and I was doing a little okay. bit of that with you but it was really holding really holding um, mm -hmm. and that's that your solar plexus is a big power center okay it's a big power center yeah. for you your personal power okay uh, mm -hmm. So we really want to move that up to your heart center. And it's not so much that okay. these women can't be, like uh, Sheena was saying, that these soul ties, right? At least the one mm -hmm. of them, it, you know, it, it does feel that way, that there, there is that soul tie with her. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, the real intense one eight, eight years ago, real, or eight months ago, um, a real mm -hmm. strong tie with her, and that's beautiful. Uh, and, and they're all welcome to live in your heart, okay? I mm -hmm. think you're going to find when you move that energy up to your heart, you're going to, one, um, feel like you have let them go without letting them go. That piece that you're afraid of, like why you don't want to let them go, will become mm -hmm. clear to you. And it'll be like, ah, okay, wait, they can still, they can still live here, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I don't mean yeah. like their energy living in you, but in terms of that connection, you know, and mm -hmm. that, that love that you feel for them. That's okay. okay. You don't have to get rid of that love. That end of the string mm -hmm. is fine. Okay? That's fine. It's yeah. the other end, right? It's that you need to yeah. stop carrying them for them. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? You guys, I swear, are going to make me cry. And I can't. I mess up my makeup. <laughs> mm, I really, <laughs> I really cry. encourage you to, sweetheart, because it's part of this energy unwinding from your body. I love crying. Yeah, I think and that must be a thing with me. Yeah. Because when uh, when my friend Alex May came and did the show with me last Tuesday, and he sent a couple of these with me, mm -hmm. he sat down. And he's like, "Here we go. It's time for the crying." And I'm like, "Oh, yeah." I guess everybody cries when they talk to me. Is it me? Yeah. You don't cry when you talk to me, Rebecca. <laughs> oh, both of Shit. you, yeah. Both of you, it's like, you just, both of you are so beautiful, honestly. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. We love you. you. Know? And, and we just live open hearted. So we protect each other yeah. from things that yeah. freak us out because we live too open hearted, probably both of us. But, you know, in order to do what we do, you have, and you know this, uh, Michelle, you have to live open hearted yeah. in order to do what we do. And exactly. Um, and, and I do. I mean, that's, I always, my friends always say, you know, um, why do you like keep going back for more like to be you know punished again I, you know it's not that you have to understand that if I'm going to be love I have to be open and it does mean sometimes you do get hurt but I'm still yeah. going to love somebody for who they are you know completely yes. I can't just love them partially I have to love them completely and to love them completely I have sure. to be vulnerable and that is part sure. of getting you know hurt absolutely and everybody has you know a thing that they do while they're here and clearly you went through a a phase where what you did was, you know, help girls to figure out their true selves. But maybe that yeah. phase is over now and you can stop being the instructor and actually maybe meet somebody who already knows who they are because it gets Thank exhausting God. to always have to be everyone's tutor. You know, it's just, yes, it's, it's hard. You need somebody who gives back to you. You don't always have to be the one who's giving back. Yeah. Well, and the truth Thank is, God. it's not the loving that hurts. You know, it's not that we love uh -huh. and then suddenly we 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 are hurt because we love uh -huh. too much or uh -huh. whatever. What hurts is when we turn off the love valve, right? When we take something yeah. personally and we go, "Well, fine, you can't have any of that." <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. That's what hurts. That moment of turning off the love valve. But if we can t keep the love valve on, guess what? There is no hurt. Nope. It, it don't hurt, baby. Turn on your love valve. Turn yeah. on your love valve. <laughs> Turn your love valve on. I sang a song with Becca Mew. If we're all love, then we cannot hear fear. Fear cannot live in there. Absolutely. You're right. Uh, You're right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Love and fear cannot live in the same place. And I don't want you Correct. to have fear in your life for the next one that you meet. So uh, we love you, sweetheart. You take care of you. And we're so glad you called. And uh, we're wishing luck. And Rebecca says love's on the way. Nice. It's on the way. Wow. Rebecca's the love whisperer. That's right. Um, Rebe Rebecca on love. I think that should just be your, <laughs> that should be your blog. Rebecca on love. Do you mostly, do, do you deal a lot with people in their love issues? I do. I do. I do too. Most of my clients, I think. Yeah. Mostly my private clients, that's what they want to talk about. 
I mean, I really mostly I redirect them back to themselves. So I mean, <laughs> they, love and, they love don't and grief necessarily like me because I'm not like, yeah, let's work on your relationship. I'm like, yeah, let's work on your relationship with yourself. Okay. Because that's the that's it's always the yeah. Reflection. I do the same thing. Yeah. They don't always like me either. Yeah. But a lot of times it's relationship stuff, and a lot of times it's um a grief, mm-hmm. death. Yes. That's mostly I think what people want to know about mm-hmm. is is grief and loss. Well, and I work with a lot of healers, so I. I work with kind of like how to be a healer in this world Mm because it's tough (laughs) to be so open it is yeah and loving and giving and to really kind of um be selfless but still have the self at the same time and how do you honor both yeah and it's hard Uh it's it's hard to be a selfless person and a healer and a and a and a somebody who's in service and then know when is it time to say enough Mm -hmm. for me i Mm -hmm. have to i have to now give to myself yeah it's hard all right, we're going to get Tina on the phone. Tina, welcome to the show. Hi, ladies. How are you? It's Hello. good to hear your voice. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. Um, say hi to Rebecca. And how, what's on your mind, my friend? Hi, Rebecca. Hello there. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? We're wonderful. How are you? I keep losing my voice. I'm great. I'm ready to get on the line. <laughs> I know what happened. We tried to call. Well, first of all, I'm a dork because I put your number in wrong by one digit. And, uh, you know, a seven is not a six. And then um, then we tried to call and it just it wouldn't even connect. So but then we called I, Michelle and it connected fine. And this time it connected fine. So Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Looms li- but you don't need to have Skype to do it. I just call your phone. Oh, yeah. It's strange. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. Works great now. I'm just looking for um, some guidance and maybe a message from my dad. Yeah, what kind of guidance are you looking for, love? Um, I don't know. Like nothing in particular. Like I think my life's going fairly well. But if there's any, like um, we're thinking of moving one day, and if we really love where we're at, but. We're kind of thinking of moving, but I think we would regret it. I do, too. So maybe some ad- mm-hmm. advice. I think you should stay right where you are. Yeah. I think you should I travel agree. a lot <laughs> and explore other places, but I think you need to stay where you are. And I think the more you do that, the more you're going to realize that you're happy where you are. I think you should explore a lot of places that you think you want to go, but you're going to realize mm-hmm. that you don't want to go so many of those places. No, we love where we're at, so mm-hmm. that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> but I do feel like there's a restlessness inside of you. Like you kind a of restlessness? Yeah, like you think sometimes you'll be happier somewhere else. And not just as far like, as locations, I think maybe a change might be good or yeah. something, but at the same time we do love where we're at. Right. What what about a change inside of you? Just change something that, that you're doing instead of changing where you are. That would be probably a good idea. You know? Anything in particular what are you doing to make you happy um i'm basically staying home right now taking care of my family i love cooking and baking and good always wanted to get into something like that good why aren't you doing that um just financial right now with like i always wanted to do like a food truck or something yeah yeah. yeah. Instead of I looking towards would. moving out of the area, why don't you look out uh, towards moving some stuff into a food truck? Not, not like yeah. living in the food truck, but you know what I mean? That move into a new place in your life instead of moving into a new place. Good idea. Does that make sense? <laughs> I like that. What if you started just baking some stuff and taking it around and trying to get local local places to carry it? and not have to worry so much about while you're getting the money together for the food truck. Just start your business and start doing little tiny amounts of stuff. Yeah, I thought of that because you know how they have all like the buy and sells on Facebook and stuff like that. A lot of people are doing that. Yeah. I have been thinking of doing something like that. Yeah, with baked goods. Yes. Love baking. Yeah. Do you make like signature cookies? Um, I do my own kind of thing. Like I do a lot of... um, stuff that my grandparents had or made when I was a kid and it's amazing. stuff you don't really see around. So, yeah. That's fantastic. That's definitely yeah. what you should be doing. Rebecca? Um, I'm connecting in with your dad right now. Uh, 
So what is it that you need to know from him, sweetheart? Because there's this um, please forgive me coming through. And really? Yeah, there's a please forgive me. Please forgive me. And uh, but there's there's a question um, from me of what what you need to hear from him in order to That's grant exactly that forgiveness. That's exactly what I needed to hear. Okay. And what do you need to know from him in order to grant him that forgiveness? Just, I'm just glad that he can finally say that because he never thought that when he was alive. He didn't know. He didn't know any better. He was giving. He was, he he was giving sickness. unto what he was given to. You understand? He he was giving what he had already received. He was giving what he all, all that he knew. So that's what we always thought that he, that's how he was raised. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it had nothing to do with you. It had no. nothing to do with you. I keep hearing precious, precious. You are precious. And he wants you to know that. And he it's wants he wants you to release it's him. It's time for the crying. And it's time for Pardon? if you can release him, sweetheart, if you can if you can do this piece of forgiveness and really receive his love for you because he has gone to the light and yet he hasn't. Does that make sense? Yes. He's in the light, but yeah, he's not I, quite made his transition. I do transition. totally get that. Yeah. That's exactly how I've been thinking, too. Like, mm -hmm. because of the, what he was down here, I don't think he's actually gone to the light or through the light. No. He he needs your help. He needs your help. He okay. needs your forgiveness. He, yeah. need, he needs to know that he is forgiven. And you don't have to do I it do right now. I forgive him, and I, I still I love him. He's my dad. Okay. okay. It's just I wish you would have done things differently. Sure. Okay, but, but there's more in order to release him. There's more. There's that really receiving this piece of, of him really saying how precious you are and have him really, really how sorry he is. He didn't know. He didn't know the damage he was doing, and he's so sorry. And he wants to take that damage from you. Mm -hmm. He wants to take it with him into the light. He can because I do forgive him. Good. And I'm so glad to hear something like this. Yeah. I think my mom would love to hear this, and my brother. Mm. Okay. Yes, 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 your brother. Your brother. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's a piece okay. there with him, for sure. There's a piece there with him. And my, my mom has nightmares still to this day of things, and... I don't know how to help her with that. Your mom has what, sweetheart? Nightmares. Oh, oh, God, I bet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. She's got to yeah. cut that tie with him and let it go. There's just so much. Yeah. There's guilt um, be between your mother and your brother, not between them for each other, but that somehow they're holding like mm -hmm. uh, what happened. Uh, mm -hmm. Like they feel responsible in, in, in different ways, in different ways, but they each have. Yep. Uh -huh. I, I totally understand that. And that uh, responsibility needs to be given back to your dad so that he can transition because that's a piece of his energy still sitting here that they're holding on his behalf. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I do hope that they listen, that you can, uh, we'll, we'll share the archive of this show, won't we, at some point? Oh, if, yeah, it's up now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, I'm going to actually yeah. show them this and let them hear that because I think they all need to hear that. Yes. Yeah. He absolutely needs to take, he wants to take the full responsibility. Yeah. It is integral to his transition, so it, it, and it is part of his spirit's evolution that he's finally ready to do that, so that this doesn't have to keep going in the lineage. Yeah. And that's really important for your brother, that this doesn't keep going in the lineage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Time to break a cycle. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's exactly what I needed to hear. Yeah. And, I, and, and you need to forgive. I've talked to other mediums. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. You no, go no, you go, you go, and then I'll go, sweetheart. You talk first, then I'll talk. Um, I've talked to other psychics and stuff, and they've said, like, oh, no, he's not really around, or, mm. you know, um, he doesn't believe in this crap, or I, mm. like, the way he would say it would be shit. <laughs> like, sure. Um, he does now. Just like that. He might not okay. when he was alive, but he certainly believes in it now. Mm -hmm. Good. There's no denying yeah. it now. Make, I feel lighter already just hearing that. Yeah. Good. I, I really do. I would like you to make sure, sweetheart, that you forgive you. 
because it's it's great that you've forgiven him, but you need to forgive you. Because there's a part of you that's imprinted by his behaviors and that mm-hmm. you sort of believe that his inability to be the father that he should have been had something to do with your inability to be a good daughter. And you need to let that go, sweetheart. You know? Yes, I, I, I get it. Because you're so wonderful and you're so special and you're so beautiful. And um, he knows all of those things now. And uh, he always, we always got along great when I got older after he stopped being the way he was. He was still an asshole, but he didn't hit no more. Yeah. But he did things in another, other ways to still hurt us. Like he was never around. Or his beer was more important, stuff like that. So, yeah, but when we were together, you know, we, I could see that he, he did love me and I showed him that I loved him too. Yeah. So. He just he hated himself. Y- you know, most people don't hurt you because they don't love you. They hurt you because they don't love them. It's a shame, but it's, that's the cycle, right? Of, so you need to make sure that you love yourself extra lots. Because well, I could do that, <laughs> and that you give extra love to your mom and your brother, because they need to know your brother especially has a, a really hard time with feeling like he's not enough, right? Yes, yep, that's exactly. He is very much like that. He's got so he's having and such a hard time of just really feeling like if he had been more uh, a better kid, your father would have been a better dad to him. You have some I, of that too, yeah. but he has it really bad. Yeah, I know he's taking it hard still, and it's been almost four years for my dad, and I know he's like a closet reaver, you know what I mean? He doesn't really show it too much. Yeah. But I know when he's alone that he probably does let out a lot. Good. I hope he lets it out, because when it's, when it's really, really gets you is when you don't ever let anything out. Right. Right. Yeah. Does he mess around with this little dragonfly that I have hanging in my living room? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody does. Oh, your dad? <laughs> it's like you know those sun catchers, uh, yeah, right? The dragonfly. Yeah. Well, it keeps moving and turning and back and forth, and there's no wind or anything. And I'm just wondering if somebody's fooling around with that, or if it's just my imagination. Uh, uh, are you seeing who? I'm not it's, seeing it's who, not, but I'm yeah, seeing whoever it's, it's it is. It's not is your like, dad. Um, I'm feeling like it's yeah. more like angelic energy, or yeah. or um. You know, um, elemental spirit energy. It's something, but it's 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 more something that wasn't a person at some point that lives okay, in your house. I'll, as, does, does it come at a say, time okay, when you're I like, I don't believe this. I want you to turn it the other way. Yeah, and it will. <laughs> yeah. Does it come at a time when like you kind of needed a reminder to laugh, like to lighten up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. the energy. That <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly what. I, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It it comes to remind you to keep levity in your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And I see like the triple digits all the time, so I know my angels are are always watching over. Absolutely, me. absolutely. What yeah. do you see the most? What triple digit do you see the most? Um, mostly the one 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 one. Interesting. Oh, eleven eleven. Or the four four four. Okay. Well, four 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 is the angel number. Mm-hmm. Eleven eleven is the high spirituality number. I always get eleven eleven. Yeah. Do you know what your numerological life path number is? No. When's your birthday? Uh, February twenty first, nineteen seventy. Nineteen what? Seventy one. Okay, so that's uh, eight, eighteen, twenty, and twenty one is forty one. So you're five. That's change. That means a lot of things in your life are about change, um, knowing when to change and when to resist change, uh, knowing when it's time to get out of a break an old pattern, get out of a habit. <coughs> but butterflies. At the same, right, b- butterflies. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, when not to be changing all the time because you're running from you. Okay. You know? Mm-hmm. I get it. You'll what s- about finances? Are they going to get better for me? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I wanted to actually come back to that because I heard you mention that, and and they are they are going to shift, um, and get a little easier. Yeah, <laughs> uh huh, and, and and really for the whole family. Yeah, 
for the whole family. Yeah. Um, and this is there's something with your dad in this, uh, that worthiness piece and that kind of heaviness, that weight, that block that you guys have been feeling and wondering what the heck. Um, so okay. as as your dad is released, is continued to be released, and and actually makes his transition completely, you'll you'll feel that blockage lift with him. And in the okay. meantime, in terms of that change, Sheena was talking about the food truck. I actually see you as a transitionary, um, like cooking. I don't know, volunteering in some way in some place. Maybe it's a at an an elderly folks home. A uh, soup kitchen of some kind, some place where you're just expressing that joy of cooking and serving in one. And I actually volunteer, just volunteered for the campground where we stay. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> Great. Well, something's going to come from that. An opportunity is going to come from that uh, for for your food truck dream. So like you stick that. with that. You're on the right path. You yeah, are. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Good. That's yeah, wonderful. Good. Things are looking up, my friend. You need to, as my mama used to say, honey, you need to give yourself a break. I would be so <laughs> happy if you learned to start treating yourself better. There's nothing wrong with that. And you're completely just, dis- I know. I felt Uh-oh, your push you're against you're me there. Outside. Oh, my oh. goodness, the push against. I just want to <laughs> hug that deep I know. Side. I've been told I should start getting into my art and painting and drawing again. So I'm going to start doing that. Well, Good. it's all art. Your cooking is art as well. Yeah. So I, I see that. you. I see you with the cookies. I see you mm-hmm. doing all kinds of baked goods that have amazing mm-hmm. designs and things on them. That's what I said by signature cookies earlier. Well, I might have to send you some out there then, oh. right, Sheena. <laughs> and we would gladly take them. Yeah, drop ship them right <laughs> now. I'm kind of hungry cookies. ever since we brought up avocados. <laughs> exactly. Ever <laughs> since. Uh, <laughs> Ever since the love of Michelle's <laughs> life gave her an avocado, yeah, we can't get enough. <laughs> now, now I want some good fat. Exactly. <laughs> good and fat. I, good I, fat, baby. I know that you gave up sugar, so I can do like a keto style. Bake, oh, yeah, bake or, or you can make them with honey. Or sometimes I, sometimes I have sugar. I just don't do it all the time like I used to. Kind of have a little bit here and there. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't quit a hundred percent. I probably should, but I haven't because. Because you know what? If you quit, if you quit everything completely, then you just get resentful, and I don't want to live in a place of resentful. Mm-hmm. Or that's what I, I tell myself when I have a Reese's peanut butter cup, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> it's one. Of, it's one of those things, Tina. Thank you so much for the call, sweetheart. We adore you, and we think you're wonderful. And uh, we just want you to be better, honey. We just want you to feel better and and be better and be happy because that's that's what matters to us. So. What beautiful callers today so far. We have, we have time for a couple more probably. All right. So how about this? <laughs> We're going to get Sheena on the line. Oh, wow. Do we think we'd ever have another how, Sheena? How is, how is that? How's that happening? It's weird, right? So Sheena, hang tight because we're coming for you, baby. Oh, my God. In just seconds, we're calling you right now. I'm just putting you in the system, and here we go. Oops. It said it's not a valid phone number, which means I wrote it down wrong again. Do you want me to read it to you? No. No, I, I did not write it down wrong. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, Rebecca, talk a little bit about what you're doing. <laughs> well, I can keep going on the Teo trip because I'm so excited about How many this times have you been there? Oh, gosh, who knows? Really, I've been going since I Got was t- uh, 21. So, uh, a lot of times, a lot, a lot of times. That's beautiful. Yeah. Many, every, almost every year? Yeah. Well, I took about a five-year break from it. But, yeah, I go, I go every year. And when I was younger, I would go more than once a year. It's wonderful. Yeah, about it's twice amazing. a year. So, yeah, I've got a lot of time in down there. It's beautiful. And on this trip, we're going to go to the Basilica. We're going to spend a little time in Mexico City. Nice. And go to Mama's house. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Go I love that story. Scene. She who flies from regions of light like an eagle on fire. So beautiful. Right? And now we have Sheena on the phone. All right. Welcome to the show, my well, friend. What a welcome for Sheena. Hi, welcome. H- how, how are, are you? I've never had somebody named Sheena on the phone. And all the times that I've done talk radio, almost 25 years, Sheena, I have never picked up the phone and said, we have Sheena on the phone. 
<laughs> yeah, the name's kind of random. I went to school with a few of them. It was prevalent in 83 when I was born after Sheena Easton. Okay. But it seems to be more popular as times went on. Yeah. And that was so, not the year that the Sheena yeah. Queen of the Jungle movie came out? The Sheena She Saved Paradise with Tanya Roberts? <laughs> No, I do. I think that's I the year that came that. out. Everybody you remember that movie? That to that <laughs> you don't remember the remake of the Sheena of the Jungle no with Tanya Roberts, the the last Charlie's Angel? You don't remember that? Oh no, oh, I you, don't. Oh, you have to watch it. It's deliciously terrible. <laughs> oh. it's, it's really bad. <laughs> yeah, that's what I always get. I always get. Are you a punk rocker? And are you the Queen of the Jungle? And I'm like, wow, that is so original. <laughs> well, well yes and yes, Easton, uh, all the time. Yeah, and people call you Sheena Easton. Yeah, and they think it's funny. Like, no one's ever called you that before. No, no, that, and that's like, it's constant. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, <laughs> what, now, uh, uh, what can we do for you, my friend? Say hi to Rebecca. Yeah. Hello, I'm hello. Wondering, hi, how are you? I've never actually been on here. I saw it briefly. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering anybody that is around me um, or anything that you can pick up. Oh, okay. Just spirit people is what you're interested in today? Um, yeah, maybe like futuristic. Futuristic spirit people? No, 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 no. Your spirit life's... People, I suppose, like maybe some future plans, like what you see at the same thing you could pick up on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going for on for you in career stuff? Um, Something. what's so far going? Something's coming. Um, what's coming? What are you working on? I, You're... Um, I'm actually, well, hopefully going back to school. Nice. So, working and hopefully changing you know into a different position mm-hmm. or career career path mm-hmm. so what do you what so. are you going to school for um i'm actually went for psychology now i'm probably going for nursing oh that's beautiful oh so. well there's the yeah. new career thing right yeah something new yeah and you're <laughs> you're gonna go to nursing school become an rn yeah yep it's beautiful yep, hopefully that's beautiful and even when you were thinking it was psychology it's because You've realized that you're here to help people and put something into the world. Oh, always. Yeah. I, I always do. I actually, it's funny, I do readings as well. Oh, good. So, and I've helped so many, but I don't read myself and I don't pick up as much on myself. So I'm like, I've never really had a reading. So I was oh. like, well, this is interesting. So I'll definitely, you know, I want to try it. I've heard you guys before and you guys are really good. Well, good. So I'm like, glad. This is my first time and yeah. Yeah, you're really being called into the medical profession and it's odd, right? Because... Um, you know, here you have this, uh, this thing that everybody wishes they did sit around and tell fortunes and, um, and you're getting called into the medical profession. And here I had this entertainment Mm -hmm. career that everyone thought they wanted. And then I got called into the spiritual world. So the universe just decides where you're supposed to go next. And I think the answer is to just stay in service and say, okay, and go. Sure. And this is definitely definitely where you're getting called now. Yeah. Something different. Like I said, I love helping people and. You know, so, but I'm like, well, it's time for a change too as yeah. well. Yeah. So, why did you feel it was time for a change? Well, I think I've been doing, you know, I started with psychology and I wanted to change. I worked all medical jobs. Mm-hmm. Then I got out of it. Then I did retail now. And now I'm like, oh my God, I got to do something else. Constantly looking to do something different. But now I kind of, you know, like the stability of it and just um, getting to something I love doing. Mm-hmm. So, right. <clears throat> Well, and I see you really doing, um, like, hands-on healing. Um, I, I, I know. Is this, yeah. is this something that you've ever done before? It's Whether, ironic. Uh-huh. No, my friend, actually, she does Reiki. And uh, okay. she was just her friend. She was just talking about the hands-on healing. I've never really gotten into that. Mm-hmm. But um, it's interesting. Yeah. 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 I, I, I really see you diving into that. And, I do, too. And being able to incorporate that. Mm-hmm. Um as a nurse, you mm-hmm. know, uh, yep. it's really amazing these days what is allowed <laughs> in the hospitals. Sure. But, you know, how much um, Sarita, my teacher and grandmother, she used to, you know, be sneaking into hospitals to heal people. <laughs> and oh, now, now we don't have to sneak in so much anymore. Yeah, now we just march on in and help people. Uh, yeah, we yeah. just do it. <laughs> I was seeing the same thing Rebecca was, that it's it's really going to be now a combination of, I was going to say, don't stop doing your readings, because mm-hmm. it's really going to be a combination of of the readings and um, mixed in with your nursing. Mm-hmm. Really? See, I still do them. I actually have a reading next week, but I do them on the side more. I don't focus just on that. That's okay. Um, 
Yeah, I met, and like I said, I did, uh, even your friend Patty Negri, uh-huh. she knew two other girls, Chin He and Sun He. Uh-huh. I don't know if you're, you know mm-hmm. those, and I used yeah. to do readings with those girls um, in upstate New York, too. Wow. And like I said, I used to do them more prominently then. I, wow. I do them, like I said, once in a while. I kind of steered away from it, mm-hmm. but... I definitely, it's important to me to help other people, so. Would it would it surprise you to know that those crazy Korean twins dragged me out of the psychic closet? I blame them. <laughs> <laughs> they used to come here and do oh my, my show. Oh my they're so funny. I love them. I was them. just a talk radio host, and then they'd be like, when are you going to come out? When are you going to admit you have guests? When are you going to talk about it? And I'd be like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and they just badgered me and badgered me and badgered me until they got me to go and work at their psychic collective. And I did that. And then I still did it kind of on the slide. And they were like, when are you going to tell everybody? When are you going to do it more? When are you going to do it more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they tease me all the yeah, time. They're, they're very, like, persistent on things. They're yeah, a riot. I get exactly. A out of them. They don't, but, yeah, I've known them for years. I met Patty through them, actually. I met Patty through them. And oh. I did. I was part of, like, two or three different pilots that they did for television and uh, all kinds of, and wow, now they're coming awesome. back out here, and so they're coming, and the and the and the hilarity is going to begin again. So, oh, that's awesome. We're putting the band awesome. back together. But uh, where are you in upstate New York? I'm um, actually, I was there. I just moved to um, Philadelphia a year ago. Nice. I love Philadelphia. Trying somewhere new. Yeah, bigger city, and good. You know, more opportunity too. Good. And do you have so. your eye on a nursing school? Um, I'm actually going to be going in September. Okay. Here. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, it's, I agree with Rebecca. Yeah. I think you you should get your Western degree and then go and get some Eastern degrees. And uh, do we consider <laughs> energy healing Eastern? We call it Eastern versus Western. I guess it doesn't have to be Eastern, but yeah, not really. But still, not, in, not in my lineage. But it's just sort of like a, a copy <laughs> isn't really called a Xerox, but that's just what we call it. My so. Southwestern. Southwest. Yeah. So go, go and get your your Western, and then get your Southwestern, <laughs> and then you know, and then and then have a, have have two practices help, and then eventually, it's your practices are going to merge into one. Your nursing is going to merge with your healing, and you're going to wind up doing both. I'm not cannot feel yet in what capacity because the universe doesn't want to talk about it yet. But at some point, you're going to be doing both at the same time. I mean, obviously, you will always be doing healing on the sly as you heal people in a hospital or a doctor's office, wherever you work. But then eventually, you're going to get a, hang on, they're going to give me a little clue. You're going to like get a job in, an, in, a, in a doctor's office healing center mm-hmm. where both Eastern and Western are practiced at the same time. Mm-hmm. There. Now they oh, told awesome. They're like, great. Now we told you. Yes. Now you've told me. And, and uh. don't wait, don't wait to do this piece of no. the the hands-on healing. As you said, you, you haven't been doing readings as much, right? No. And um, no. what I invite you to do is bridge those two together. Yeah. Um, the hands-on healing and the readings are kind of the same thing for you, um, that you'll bring what you do as a psychic, okay? You'll bring that into the hands-on healing. Because there's all different ways to be a hands-on healer, and you don't necessarily need that degree to open the door that Sheena's um, showing you mm-hmm. right now. Open that door, baby. Okay. Yeah, but I do encourage you in the meantime to just to, to start, to just start practicing. Just hover your hands over your own body and see what information comes to you. Hover your hand over, over sure, a friend's body. Sure, I've always body. been like very, like, in, yeah. when it comes to my body, I'm very in tune. Yeah. So yeah. I'll say, you know, I go to appointments and I'll say, you know, there's something wrong. Actually, I'd open her surgery at 26. Mm. Oh, wow. And I said to the doctor, I go, you know, there's something wrong with my heart. Mm-hmm. And he goes, no, 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 you're young, you're healthy, it's anxiety. They chalk it all up for anxiety. Right. So I said, no, 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 there's something wrong with my heart. Mm-hmm. And come to find out there actually was. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's one like, of your superpowers. I'm very in tune mm-hmm. to that. Yeah. Mm hmm. <clears throat> I agree. Yep. I agree. And, it, and, and just like any of our superpowers, you know, we have to use them. We have to use them. If we don't use them, they start to weaken. It's not yep. that they'll just go away forever. They'll never no. go away forever. But Use it or lose it, baby. Yeah, but you do need to keep using them and build them and get them stronger and stronger. And this is one of your superpowers. It is your ability, that kind of x-ray vision into the body, which is not something that I have. Yeah. No. I have emotional x-ray vision <laughs> yeah. and spiritual, but the physical, Sarita had that, but I, I don't have that, but you do. But you're a medical you intuitive. Yep, mm-hmm. you are. 
thank you, sweetheart. You take care, and we loved having you here, and you keep us posted. Let us know how you're doing, and uh, if you see those crazy twins on their way to Los Angeles, tell them I'm still out of the damn closet. <laughs> <laughs> and if you take nothing else that we've said from the last two hours of the show, it's please hover your hand over a friend's body. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, where can people find you online, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> on that note, um, at Shaman Sister, pretty much anywhere on social media. My website is RebeccaHaywood.com. <laughs> and yeah, you can email me, Rebecca at RebeccaHaywood.com. Hit me up. We can set up a free consult for you and figure out just how we are meant to work together. Beautiful. And yeah. I'm at uh, Sheena Metal uh, Spiritual.com and I am raising your vibration.com. Currently available to teach workshops, one on one sessions, or couple sessions, or friend sessions, family sessions. I'm a minister. Um, I'm also the founder of a movement of peace, love, kindness, and unity. We're having a gathering on Sunday, uh, 11 a.m. doors, 11.30 to 2.30 show. My guest is Dee Wallace. The wonderful Patty Negri will be opening up the night with a, a spiritual, energetic, elemental invocation. And um, come down. And, you know, the tickets are, there's no tickets. They're free. Door, I always want to keep these free. <laughs> Just tell me how many people you're bringing and I'll reserve seats for you. Um, and it, it, I just want to gather people in peace, love, kindness, and unity. And it, uh, two day, yesterday, Monday, was the three-year anniversary of my mom's death. So um, this is for her this Sunday. And it's St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Did you figure that Irish would die right around St. Patrick's Day? Lord <laughs> Almighty. Uh, two, and two weeks before my birthday. What was she thinking? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, come down and do that with us. And there's so many things I have going on. I have a great web series. We are living with the dead .com. I've got a YouTube channel with all those episodes. It's just Sheena Metal on YouTube. Um, I do live events with Patty Negri, AntiquesGoShow.com. For the movement, we have our outreach, The Vibration Nation. We have our blog, A Vibration Nation. We have I am raising the vibration .com and our nonprofit, RaisingTheVibration.org. And of course, this show, LATalkRadio.com, SheenaMetalExperience.com. We will see you tomorrow on the show. Also, uh, next. Monday or Tuesday, we'll be back with more Lightworkers Unite here on the show. And, of course, I do it every week on Haunted Playground, hauntedplayground.com, Tuesdays, 12 noon to 2 p.m. It's the Sheena Metal Experience on LA Talk Radio, and you know what happens here, my friends. Every Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific time, we rip the veil off the human sideshow and expose those big old homo sapiens at their most bizarre sometimes and at their most beautiful every single day. And you know it's my show, and that's true, my friends. It is indeed my show, but what it really is, always and forever, it's your experience. Thanks for listening. Have a great night, and I'll see you all tomorrow right here on LA Talk Radio. Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio.